Hello and welcome back to Sassy AF TV. I'm so excited to be here with you today. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you hit subscribe and ring the bell so you get notifications for future videos. And if you're watching this live, don't forget that you can ring in with any comments, questions while we are talking today with our lovely guest, Jennifer Bittner. I'm so excited that you're here, Jen. It's so great to talk to you like in real life versus just via social media. I know, we're people. I know, we're real people, what is that about? <laughs> um, Jennifer has written a fabulous book called Just a Girl with Anxiety. So you are actually like my first author review on Sassy AF TV, which I'm thrilled about because I'm a total book nerd and I love books, I'm reading them all the time. I took a little hiatus in life from reading a couple of years ago and in the past year and a half, I think I've read more books than I than I had in like the previous six or seven before that. So it could have something to do with like raising kids. I don't know. That gets a little distracting sometimes when it comes to reading. But totally. anyway, I'm so happy to have you here today to join us. Uh, let me tell the audience a little bit about you. And then I will let you, of course, give your own introduction. But Jennifer is a mind fitness guru. She is a holistic health advocate and a business mentor. She is obsessed with essential oils. Okay, who isn't? I'm also obsessed with essential oils. That's part of why I was so excited to talk to her. Um, and she helped others find their definite purpose in life, which is so, so cool. So thank you for being here. I wanna give you the floor and I want one extra piece of uh, information for you to share when you talk about yourself, Jen, is what is your favorite song to dance to? So welcome. <laughs> well, thank you. I am so excited to be here. I'm just, you know, I love being part of these types of collaborations with women and just empowerment and being able to, you know, share our hearts, share our stories, and just knowing that even one person can be affected by a story and it could really change the trajectory of their lives, right? Sometimes it's just about those little nuggets. So I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for having me. And we're kind of like on polar opposite ends. You're in California. I'm up in the great the great north in uh, Canada here by Toronto. So it's, it's kind of cool that we're able to, you know, connect um, and social media is such a beautiful thing. So thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. So you didn't answer my question though. What is your favorite oh, song to dance to? Of course, my favorite song. To dance to if you want. <laughs> so I am a country music Ooh. lover. So you give me anything country music that's upbeat, and I mean we we have kind of like a little Google a Google Home as speaker in our living room. We have a very open concept. Uh, main floor and as soon as we get a good country song on my husband <laughs> we're on, in the middle of the in the middle of the kitchen and and we go for it so I uh, like not go for it that way but I mean <laughs> well, hey, that works too <laughs> <laughs> I want the right show if I'm gonna be talking about that yes, you are. <laughs> so country music I'm all about that you can always always find me loving to dance uh, to any country song I love it. Well, I'm not a huge country fan, but I will tell you that there is a um, place about two and a half hours north of Santa Barbara, and it's called Paso Robles, California, and they are known for their what's called the Mid-State Fair, because it's right in the middle of California, and they have a two-week fair and country music festival, and they get all the top artists come. I don't know all the top country stars, but I know Miranda Lambert was there, and... Um, Eric Church, and I don't know, the other big names, you probably know them all. So if you guys are ever looking for a Southern California getaway with some country music, you should check out the Mid-State Fair. It's here like every July. So. Ben, there, there's our next yeah. trip. There we go. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, I want to hear about your book. I know I've read it, so I don't want to give away all the details. And I loved it. I have to say that I actually started reading it while I was in Las Vegas. I was there for my birthday a couple of weeks ago. And I was sitting by the pool reading about your anxiety. So <laughs> really good because I had a cocktail in hand and then you said we shouldn't drink so much. I was like, oh, I should probably put that down. Uh, but tell me, Jen, about your journey with, um, you know, writing the book, your story. Just dive in and, and give, give us a little bit of background about how this all transpired and, and how Just a Girl with Anxiety came to be. Sure. Well, I was, I mean, I've been a high achiever my whole life. I've always been, you know, I, I, even when I was a little girl, I started businesses and, you know, while all the other kids were playing outside, I was like business planning how I was going to, you know, launch a, a, a jewelry, a jewelry collection at the, uh, the bottom of my driveway, you know? And so I've always been a, a big time go-getter and 
you know, this saw me through university and I had three jobs and, you know, I was working for Canada pageants as the national director recruiting, you know, recruiting contestants for our pageant while going to school and doing all these things. And I've always been really involved. And I never really thought that was a bad thing um, until it caught up with me. And so I had started my career in 2005 in the fitness industry. I had graduated from university. I had ended up, um, you know, getting this job actually in sales in the fitness industry in Canada for the largest group of fitness clubs. And within a first couple months, I had I had just soared and I was ranked top salesperson in the entire company. I was working long hours. I was drinking, you know, seven coffees a day just to keep me <laughs> awake because you yeah. know, I was so determined to keep that status of, you know, being the being top in the company. And um, it finally just started to, I think it just started to kind of take a toll on my body and my mind. And so I was at a place where, you know, I just moved out on my own and I was 21 and I had finished these three years of university. I drank every weekend, like my body was exhausted. I wasn't eating properly. Um, you know, again, I was just so fixated on this high achievement mode that uh, about six months into my, you know, my corporate career, I ended up being diagnosed with a severe anxiety and panic disorder. And I was, you know, I was just, I didn't know what to think because at that time in 2006, this was not something that, you know, mental health was not a thing. Then it was, there was no awareness. There was no talk about it. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot of information out there. There was nobody being open about it. And I had had my very first panic attack while in a car. And th from that moment, when I had that very first panic attack, I just started getting them one after another, after another, after another. Yeah. And they started in cars because my first one was in a car. And so every time I got in a car, I would have a panic attack. And, oh um, you know, you, you don't you don't realize the things you take for granted until you can't do it anymore uh, with ease. And so it spiraled from there and it went on for 10 years and it just started escalating and escalating and escalating. And then it went from cars to not just cars, but being in other people's homes to being on airplanes, to being in um, cars with other people. And it just started to um, like, I couldn't even go for a walk without having a panic attack because I wasn't close to home. And oh. so it really started to take over my life, but I was also hiding it. So I lived with these two identities. I was, you know, still trying to keep this image of you know this top ranked you know individual in my company who I was climbing the corporate ladder so quickly I became a general manager of my own fitness club at 23 and I was just climbing and climbing and scaling and scaling in the company and yet I was living with this other identity where I was just falling apart and having these panic attacks behind my closed office door and I lived with this chronic anxiety all the time and I really didn't know what to do with it because I didn't want to admit it to anybody because I was afraid that it would impede on my ability to you know to continue to grow in the company if they knew that I was broken and so it took a long time it took a lot of years before I came out about it and then I started to self-educate because the traditional medication and whatnot was not working for me and so I self-educated on holistic alternatives and other modalities that were more natural. And that's when I really started to see the shift. And it was through the natural alternatives that um, my life started to change and it started to open my eyes to other ways of healing. And uh, that's kind of what's led me to where I am today. I started my company in 2012 called My Mind Fitness. It's all about a holistic approach to a fit and healthy mind. It's about exercising your mind's potential. And uh, I started it just with coaching. And then I've, I've gotten many certifications since then and really expanded what I do. Um, I'm one of the leading top educators in doTERRA essential oils. So aromatherapy and emotional aromatherapy and even using just the oils as, as part of a daily health routine has been paramount and that's what's actually that business is what also allowed me to leave my corporate job and bring my husband home as well so uh, i just felt last year that i needed to write a book about it i needed to you know talk about my story talk about my principles for mind fitness mastery and and the main things that i would work with any client to do to overcome you know where they are and, and show them that potential for where their life can go when focusing on that mind fitness, focusing on exercising 
our mental wellness and achieving an optimal state of mental wellness. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, there's so much to everything that you just shared and from, you know, reading the book and getting more detailed insight to your journey into what you've been through. First of all, um, you know, my initial thought is I have a very similar, you know, path to you, which is probably why it resonated so strongly with me also being a high achiever or an achievement junkie and always, you know, climbing the ladder as quick as possible. When I graduated college, I quickly got into a sales job as well, not in the fitness industry, but in the payroll industry, working for a top Fortune 100 company. And I quickly climbed the corporate ladder there and I was managing a sales team of anywhere from seven to 10 people by the time I was, before I was 25 years old. And a lot of pressure, there was, you know, I held probably, uh, gosh, I don't even remember the numbers, but I probably held like a one and a half million dollar quota just for my team. And there was a lot of pressure and I was just, always, you know, under the gun to get my people to perform and to make sure that I was bringing in the numbers. And I thought, okay, this is the norm. And I would, I remember staying up late at night and, you know, working my ass off and, you know, not giving myself a break. And I had, you know, while I didn't have, you know, panic attacks, my kind of, um, issue that came out of it was a ton of resentment. And then this major rebellion that happened like 10 years after the fact, because I felt like, oh my gosh, I wasted my whole twenties you know, climbing the corporate ladder and feeling like I have to be this achievement junkie. So, you know, there's something to be said for us type A personalities, overachievers, et cetera, but there has to be this balance, right? So, you know, that definitely, um, you know, resonates strongly with me. You know, one thing that comes to mind, and, and I like this perspective when I read in the book, was you talked about how um, kind of the imagery and the narratives that we've been told around mental health is often negative, right? And you talked about at the beginning when you were diagnosed, like there was no information out there. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about your mission to really change perceptions around mental wellness as opposed to starting at it from a negative point, but really looking at it from a proactive, positive place. Oh, absolutely. That's that's probably my biggest mission with with what I'm doing is as allowing people to see that you know, it's just, it's what society has placed on the two different, you know, the two different fitness worlds, if you will. So if I were to say to you right now, you know, physical, physical health, what do you think of when I say physical health, what kind of comes to your mind? Running. <laughs> working out. Right. 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 Yeah. Running. Right. What are, what are some other things? Yeah. Eating well, nutrition, et cetera. Nutrition, right. Yep. Strong cardio, you know, like you think of all of these things that just embody physical health. Okay. So mental health, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Well, I know where this is going, the leading question, because of course I've read it, but right. I mean, you often think of mental health, you think of, oh, am I depressed? Am I sad? Am I, you know, how do I my keep crazy. myself away from being, you know, anxious and yeah, yeah. crazy. Totally. So even though those two are the exact same things, right? You're thinking physical health, you think strength, you think everything that I want, right? Mental health, you think illness. So right, you think those are the things I don't want, right? Like you don't, you don't want the, you don't want the mental health. You don't want mental health. When in reality, mental health is an optimal state of wellness. Mental health is what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve mental health. And yet, you know, mental health is the absence of illness. But right. we have conditioned our, you know, just society has put this stigma on it that mental health means illness. And so, yeah, like for me, it's really about, um, it's really about trying to move in that direction where we're, we're starting to realize that mental health, mental wellness, mind fitness, these are all the aspects where we're, where, where we're learning about how to exercise our mind's potential. And right. through mind fitness, which is why I actually started my company called Mind Fitness, I actually trademarked. The, the name Mind Fitness in Canada, um, you know, this was eight years ago when no one was using it. Now it's, it's kind of a little bit more widespread. And, um, but, you know, Mind Fitness to me was less about let's talk about how to overcome illnesses because I, I am in no, I, I would be irresponsible if I started talking about illnesses. It's outside of my scope of practice. I'm not right. trained in that area. What I talk about is just like I did in the fitness industry is I taught people, you know, the tools to achieve optimal physical fitness. I wasn't a personal trainer. I wasn't trained or certified as a trainer. I sold fitness. I sold the idea of the hope and the tools. I sold the personal training that a trainer would then, you know, take them and work on their physical health. And when it comes to mind fitness, it's the same thing. So I am, you know, I'm teaching people about how to retrain 
their their mental wellness and their mind so that when they they can have a positive mental attitude so they can live in a state where it's not what happens to us but it's how we respond to it and right. you know i just went through this as as you know and i'm pretty transparent um i just went through this experience and i'm still kind of dealing with it right now but you know i found out two and a half weeks ago that you know my husband and i were having a miscarriage and you know, it was something where, of course, it hit hard. You know, I was I was almost nine weeks along. We were really excited, and we had we had just started trying for our second and got pregnant right away. So we were so excited. I had a very easy first pregnancy. Got pregnant right away with my first daughter. Super easy pregnancy. So we just didn't think anything of this. And uh, and then when I found out that the baby, you know, had had stopped growing and the heartbeat had stopped you know, it hit me hard. And I think it for that first 24 hours, like it was really tough. And by that second day, because I worked so much on my mental, my mental wellness and my, my mind fitness, I was able to within that first 24 hours, I gave myself kind of that grieving period. But I sat back and I started to think, you know, what are the principles that I train that I teach the tools that I teach people when it comes to having a fit and healthy mind? Well, it's how we respond to situations in our life. So how could I look at this differently? How could I look at this from an opportunity of you know, a, a positive mental attitude and filter this, this experience into something that's going to be, that allows me to have more grace and acceptance. And so, you know, after the first 24 hours, it was less trauma and it was more, you know, giving, giving peace to this, this experience and knowing that, you know, this soul was still going to come back and all the things and people are like how are you doing this like how aren't you you know like just so traumatized over this experience like i never talked about it you know i had a miscarriage or i had a couple miscarriages or whatever and oh my gosh i never came out about it and i'm like see this is the difference right, right. when you have trained your mind you look at the experiences that happen to you completely differently and so i think that's what's so important is that we 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 really take we take that same power and that same importance and priority of physical fitness into our mental fitness so that we can recover from things quicker, right? If you're stronger and you work out your body and you get an injury, you're likely to recover quicker if your body is fit and well and healthy. So it's the same thing when it comes to our, our mental health. Absolutely. And I mean, and I, I, of course, my condolences about the miscarriage, because certainly that's a very difficult and emotional, you know, place to be in. But I really applaud your, first of all, your openness and transparency about it and sharing because, you know, these are real life things. And and to be honest, I think I, I'm probably the rare exception that I knock on wood, I never went through that. But I'll tell you, so many of my friends did, but I feel like these are things that we don't talk about. We as a society, you know, we as women as That's like mental health. Well, I know, but what, right. Why do we not talk about it? And, you know, part of my mission with Sassy Healthy Fit is to really open the doors to these conversations, because I feel like the more open that we can be, the more tra transparent that we can be as humans, the more that we're going to learn and the more that we're going to grow and the more that we're going to contribute better to society. And I know, I know you have a daughter and I've got, you know, three kids and I know that I, we all want, you know, a better world for, even if you don't have children, you want a better world for the generations that, you know, succeed you. So for me, it's like, if we can keep having these conversations and opening the doors of, of communication, I think that's so tremendous and so beneficial to everybody that hears. So again, even if one person hears the story, right? I think just the, the fact that you, you know, went through that process, you acknowledged, you allowed yourself to feel the grief, and then you worked on the ways that you have trained yourself to move through it. So that's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. And, and one of the, the, um, the other missions that you talk about, um, that is very in alignment with me is not being a victim, right? I think you said, uh, go from being a victim and be, don't be a victim, but be victorious, right? And I like to say, be your own hero. So certainly the same messaging. So tell me about that in terms of, you know, dealing with your own issues with anxiety and how you, you know, kind of took charge of your life, like you said, and did the self-education. Tell me about that process and what motivated you to, you know, be victorious. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think so often we sort of, we, we just feel, you know, these are the cards that were handed to me, like, why, oh, why, why me, why me? And I went through that a lot. Like at the beginning of my journey, it was, it was like, why, why? why me? I have never experienced anything like this in my life. And now it's completely debilitated me. I can't live a normal life anymore. I, you know, even going down the aisle at my own wedding, like I had to be, you know, I was like gravel and Ativan and all these like things are trying to get me down the aisle. And I'm like, 
this is not life. Like, you know, why, why has this happened to me? What did I do to deserve this? And it was this victim approach. Right. And when I was able to learn that your mess becomes your message mm, and the gift that was within this obstacle and this challenge. And, you know, I really believe that God gives you the greatest challenge that you can handle in order for you to heal from it so that you can then serve and heal other people. And so that's exactly what I'm doing with it now. But, you know, there was a time when I was I was a total victim to it. And I, you know, and then when I had that shift and I had that switch to sort of thinking, you know, how can I move through this? How can I become like how to use this, as you would say, right, be your own hero? Well, I'm going to save myself like no one else is going to save me. No other, you know, p pill or, you know, there's not a magic cure modality that's going to do it it's 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 me deciding to do the work every single day to you know it's like working out any muscle right you can't just show up to the gym one time and be like "Woo, where's those 50 pounds are they going to be gone when i wake up it's like right. no you got to show up three times a week watch your eating drink water like you know lessen the alcohol and all the things you know and and then in six months from now you'll see the results of your consistent persistence effort and right. so with mind fitness it's the exact same thing you know you have to do all the things and you have to do it consistently and and with persistence right absolutely no i love that and can you talk to us more about that and, and i know you're not you know a doctor or have a medical background but um, I love your take on, you know, the strong connection between our mental wellness and our physical wellness, right? And how you can't really separate the two. So maybe you can get a little bit into how um, when you were starting your self-education journey and you weren't changing some of your physical habits, how things weren't gelling quite as well as when you decided to go all in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I had made, <clears throat> excuse me, I had made a few you know, quite a few changes when it came to things like, you know, meditation. So relaxing the mind and more connecting to my body and, and, and feeling the feelings and all of that. And, um, I had started to eat a lot better. So I'd started to watch my food and, and I had a holistic nutritionist, but then there were certain other aspects of my environment and my lifestyle that I didn't change. I still drank coffee which was a huge stimulant. And mm -hmm. so I would start my morning just like buzzing and having the stimulant effect, which gives me the offshoot of being anxious feelings. Um, you know, I would drink coffee. I would drink every weekend. I was drinking heavily every weekend. So now my body's in this low vibration, having to detox constantly, you know, mm -hmm. and so I, but I was drinking to escape the week of, you know, this chronic anxiety, right? So I was drinking on the weekends. I was drinking my coffees. Like I was doing like these other aspects and I was working in an environment that was extremely overstimulating, right? So I'm working in a fitness club where it's loud music, tons of people, lots of energy, right? Bright lights, you know, right. and those aspects were keeping me just buzzing constantly. So it, you know, although I had changed certain things, um, being in that lifestyle still consistently, right? So every day going to work in that environment, every weekend drinking heavily, every day drinking coffees, you know, the things that I was doing well was only getting me so far because on the flip side, I was doing things to counteract it. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. So, you know, I'm, yeah, it was, it was, once I started to realize what things were were really causing that 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 imbalance, I had actually done a six month cleanse. And so I had to quit coffee. I had to quit drinking. I had no sugar. Like so I did this for six months and I went on a very strict um, um, protocol with my food through a holistic nutritionist. And I saw dramatic results with that. So I knew for sure that that was having a huge effect on me. And I didn't drink coffee or drink alcohol for three years because right oh. after the cleanse, I got pregnant. Okay. And, then, um, and then, of course, like after pregnancy, then I was breastfeeding. So, you know, it just it kept me off all of those things. And when I went back even a little bit, my body rejected it. So oh, to say, I very rarely will I be drinking. Like uh -huh. very rarely do I drink. I don't drink coffee anymore other than a decaf coffee here and there. And so those things stuck because I saw what they did to, you know, to, to my lifestyle. So those things were imperative, you know, changing certain aspects of my lifestyle that were contributing to the chronic anxiety. Right. I mean, it's amazing to me just the, um, 
the, the also, you know, when you talk about nutrition, you know, this strong connection between mental health and gut health mm-hmm. is huge. And I know that that's not really your specialty necessarily, but you know, there's this, um, and I know a lot of people don't know this. I didn't know it until recently, but there's so much connection between taking care of your gut health and making mm-hmm. sure you know, that, that positive, that will positively impact you know, your mental wellness. So I think there's, there's so much to that. But a lot of times I feel like because food culturally, right, is a comfort for many people, many people don't want to give up. Um, You know, they don't want to think about the possibility of, oh my gosh, if I have to give up alcohol, or if I have to give up sugar, or if I have to give up any of these variety of things. They're addictions, right? Like they're hitting the pleasure center of our brain. And there's actually a nerve, the vagus nerve that runs from the brain to the gut. And that's why they call your gut your set or your stomach. They call it your second brain for a reason or why we have gut instincts. Mm-hmm. Most of our hormones are actually produced in the gut. So our serotonin, which is our happy chemical, 90% of it's produced in the gut. So, so when we say like you are what you eat, it's because you actually like what you fuel your body with is the fuel for the neurotransmitters and for the all the endorphins and the dopamine and the serotonin and all of those hormones and the and the yeah just the neurochemicals that keep keep our brain functioning it's all from what we're consuming and so when we can heal the gut the actual protocol that i went on was called gaps diet which is a gut and psychological syndrome okay it's looking at that connection between your gut and your brain and how it's actually feeding the brain through what we eat and right. so if our eating is crap, then your moods are crap, really, right? Like, because that's how right. we're all being connected. Right. So what do you recommend, though, for somebody? Let's say, you know, somebody, whether they've been diagnosed with officially with anxiety and panic attacks or they just experience them, right? But they, they know that they're real. And maybe they are listening to this and thinking, oh, shit, you know, I'm not eating that well and I'm drinking too much coffee and I'm drinking too much alcohol but they're scared, right? Like that's usually the reason is fear-based, right? Fear-based because we're scared to make these changes, give up something that we perceive to be something that we need slash really want. And Mm -hmm. it's too hard. It's too hard, right? For us to give up. Where do you recommend that somebody begins? If they're kind of, you know, halfway between and they're in this situation, they're feeling anxiety, they're having anxiety, they're having panic attacks, and yet they're scared to go all in. How do you recommend somebody like get started with a protocol toward their mental health? Well, the way that I've designed my six principles of mind fitness mastery, I take it from the foundational sort of platform, which is food. So, Mm -hmm. it's you know, your brain fuel. So starting with food and then working on exercise after that. So getting the body involved. So now that, you know, we can again start to feed feed the the health of our brain through movement and through food. That's so important. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I work from there on learning the tools and tips on how to rest and manage stress throughout our days. Because if our eating is off and, you know, our body isn't moving and we're stagnant, you know, I could teach you the tips, but they're not, nothing's going to work if we're not starting with the foundation first, right? So I always start with food and brain fuel. I move into movement then rest and managing stress and learning how to take mind fitness breaks throughout the day. Then um, I like to really dive into um, sort of my last three lifestyle more uh, approaches of reducing toxic load. So reducing the inflammation that we have within our environment and in our body, that can mean toxicity in the people that we surround ourselves with, because that affects our mental health, right. and toxicity in chemicals in our environment, because that causes inflammation to the brain. So that's where my essential oils come in a lot of the time, you know, we'll we'll completely make over cleaning cabinets with natural plant based essential oils and uh, the essential oils come in to play with the resting and managing stress as well. Um, And then I talk about the importance of having social support and Mm -hmm. having meaning and purpose in your life. And so I I kind of I approach the the six principles from the level of we need to start here, because if we don't have a strong foundation, our house will crumble. And so, you know, just kind of taking it through those reins of, of, you know, accomplishing one and then moving on to the next. So it is more in a step by step process as opposed to just like do all of the things. Right. 
yeah, doing all the things, that's too much, right? Because then we get overwhelmed and then we shut down. So, yeah. you know, my other message is about keeping things simple, sustainable, and fun. So exactly to your point, right? You yeah. start you start at one place and then you move up and you work into it so that it becomes sustainable. Exactly. Right? Because what I'm hearing you say is that you really had to transform your life. And through, you know, reading and learning more about your journey, I know it was a long time before you really got to the place that you're at today. So it wasn't like it happened overnight. Exactly. Right? And you you took, you know, two steps forward, one step backwards, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So as does everybody. I mean, I think that that's 100 percent normal. But ideally, if we can go through a journey that is with the the um, intention of it being sustainable. Right. You're more likely to be successful over time. Right. I love you know, I don't know. Have you read The Compound Effect? It's one of my. One yeah, of my, I love that. Yeah, the compound effect is is such a great concept. I teach that to my team all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I say it all the time. It's like, you know, small, consistent behaviors over time equal radical results. Like you said, you don't go to the gym once and shed those 50 pounds. Yeah. It happens over time. And that's when, you know, you see the results. So same thing. You have to make and That's it why not everyone's successful, right? Like right. a lot of people fail at it or say it didn't work or this didn't work. Well, right. let's look at let's look at your your efforts, right? Like right. how long did you do it for? Did you do it consistently? Did you do it as directed? Do you do it, you know, so I think that's definitely a huge part of it, right? Is that consistency and, and actually giving yourself the grace. If, you know, for example, I had done a, um, the day after I found out about our miscarriage, I had uh, an appointment booked and I did, you know, it took me like a month to get this appointment. So I didn't want to change it. And I went for this appointment for, it's called rapid transformational therapy. And it's like hypnotherapy. It's a 90 minute session. And then you need to listen to this audio for 21 straight days. And, you know, with everything that's been going on with me and then my daughter got sick and all these things, I'm like, I didn't do it consistently every single day. And so when she followed up with me today and she said, how did it go? Like, how's it been going? You know, how are, how are your audios going? And I'm like, not going to lie. I'm like 80%. You know, I haven't done it every day but I'm not going to stop at the 21 days then. So I'm going to right. do this audio until that, the thing that I was working on until it's gone. You know, right. I'm not going to say after the 21 days, well, that didn't work. Well, yeah, I haven't done it every single day in a row. Right. right. So, you know, but I give myself grace. I'm like, listen, I was going through a lot and sure. I missed a few days here and there, but you know what? I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to keep going until I see the results that I was looking for. And so sometimes we just need to believe in the process and we need to know what outcome we're, we're going for and right. then trust that we're going to grow. We're going to grow our ways to that outcome because sometimes we actually have to completely change who we are and we need to leave behind the old us in order to step into the new us that we want to become. And right. that is a hard thing for a lot of people because as they see themselves changing, they get nervous and right. they feel themselves changing. They get scared. And so some people will quit and then they'll be like, okay, okay, no, you know what? That was working. I just got scared. I need to go back. There's no shame in that. You can quit and stop and start as many times as you want. As long as you keep going back, you know, as long right. as you know that, you know, you have a plan and in order for you to achieve a goal, you need to work the plan that you have until you've worked it so, 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 so much that finally your subconscious mind believes, okay, this is actually going to happen. Like she keeps doing it. She keeps doing these steps. Okay. I believe this is going to happen. And then when that, when that moment, that aha moment happens and you change your subconscious mind into the deepest layers you're then given a new plan. You're given a new plan by the universe. You're given a new plan, that bigger plan, one that you didn't even think of yourself because you've you've worked so hard and you've been in action and that's where the results truly start coming from because you have to prove that you're in it. You have to prove that you're gonna do what it takes and you may fail and you may get back up again. Doesn't matter, but you just gotta keep going. Right, absolutely. And, and you know, I love this concept about failure because I may uh, you know, a recovering perfectionist, I guess you could say. And I still struggle with that. You know, that's part of my struggle is dealing with, you know, never wanting to fail. And it was something that I, um, it, because I never wanted to fail, there are so many missed opportunities that I had growing up because I was always wanting to take the safe route and never wanted to take the risk and take the failure. And I was, um, I'm reading the book right now. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called game changers by Dave Asprey. He's the bulletproof coffee guy. Oh. Um, he, the bullet, all the bulletproof products there. That's his, uh, that's his company. But his book is about, um, you know, he's a biohacker and he's really into like optimal living all the way around mental, physical, spiritual, et cetera. And so he's done over his, you know, profession of uh, however many years, 
de a decade or something, he's interviewed tons of people, really high end, optimized people because he's fascinated by all of this. But he was talking about the chapter I was reading today was about failure. And he said, if you don't fail, you're not trying. And I think that that's so um, of such paramount importance that we have to be we have to understand that we are going to fail and we can't let the, the fear of failure get in our way and that reptilian, reptilian brain that wants to stay safe and, you know, not keep us or keep, wants to keep us from, you know, getting in harm's way. Sometimes you have to say, no, I'm going to keep doing this thing, like you said, until you change your beliefs and that becomes your new narrative. Yeah. So. And I think it's like how we even experience failure, right? It's like in every failure, there's a seed of equivalent benefit that, yep. is, you know, straight from think and grow rich. And every single time we fail, there is an equal opportunity that gives us a benefit from that failure. Right. And that's where if people were able to shift their mindsets, right, into looking, okay, hang on, what just happened? That sucked. And that right. was something I was expecting. However, how can I look for the equivalent benefit? How can I look at what is this bringing to me that I didn't have before that now I can put in my pocket? Even if it was a challenge, even if it was hard, even if it you know brought you know through emotions or whatnot, there's always a seed of equivalent benefit. And so it's looking for that because again, it comes down to it's not what happens to us in life, it's how we respond to what happens. Absolutely. So in that response of, okay, that sucked, but there is some sort of equivalent benefit, that's what I'm gonna look for. I'm not gonna look for why that sucked, I'm gonna look for actually how can I grow from this. Right, no, I love that. All right, so one, uh, I think one final question that I'm curious about is, you know, someone like me, so I don't have, uh, you know, official anxiety or anything to that effect. However, I definitely have anxious moments. And for me, I noticed that it's really, um, I can really dial it into the time of my cycle. And, you know, when I'm in my, you know, progesterone heavy stage right before I get my period and during my period, that's when I'm most prone to feeling anxious and having these moments of self doubt, et cetera, et cetera. So I know throughout the book, you have these different practices about different mind fitness techniques that you can do throughout the day, right? Or when you're experiencing some sort of anxiety. So can you give us one that anybody could do at any point when they have that moment of like, oh, I can't breathe. I don't know what I'm doing. And they're just having kind of a mild panic set in. How do you reframe that? So give us one of your favorite mind fitness techniques. Um, for me, it would be essential oils. So I always have them on me, right? So what I would do is like, I can just grab one right now. So this serenity was my go-to. So this was, this is uh, what saved me and how I really, this was my gateway oil. So I would have a mindfulness moment. And so I just be like, okay, I just need to take five right now. And I would just, you know, put a drop of oil in the palm of my hand. I'd rub my hands together and I would just make a sense tent over my nose. I would breathe in, I would then start to experience all my five senses. So my sense of smell, my sense of touch, if I were to like just rub it on the back of my neck. If I was using an oil like peppermint, I would use my sense of taste. With doTERRA's brand of oils, they're dietary supplements, so they are ingestible. So you could just, you know, put it on the roof of your mouth and experience all your senses. Because you cannot be in your senses and in your in your head at the same time. So if you engage your senses then you get automatically come out of your head. By the scent tent and breathing in the aroma, you're taking deep breaths, which is starting to engage your parasympathetic nervous system. So the part of your nervous system, that's your rest and digest, right? So you start to pump the brakes on your nervous system. You're sending a signal by the aroma, is sending a signal to the brain, the limbic system, which is responsible for your emotions and hormonal regulation, sending a signal that's like, we're, we gotta calm down, right? Because that's that's the chemical compound associated with these oils. You know, if I'm using a citrus oil, it's gonna be like, we need, let's, let's lift our mood, let's invigorate. So all the oils serve a different purpose emotionally. Right. And so you just take that moment and you, you breathe it in, you take a mind fitness moment and then just sit and be calm. And just even just that reflection of, what have I done today that's caused me to my thermometer to already be at an eight out of 10? That yep. experience took me and shot me right through the roof because we should always be at like a four, a four or five, right? So if we get a little bit of anxiety and might go up to seven, still manageable. Why, why did, was I already at an eight 
Right. And then it went. resting state. I was at a beat. And now I just shot through the roof, sending me into panic. Like, what's been going on? And it's that reflection, right? That gentle, graceful, I'm not going to be hard on myself reflection of what I've not what I've not been doing, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So that would be, you know, just using the oils as an ability to just kind of calm, rest, reset, so that you can start to do some inventory of where things might be off balance. Awesome. And if someone doesn't have the oils, I imagine that the breathing and the reflection, et cetera, is still a great way to, like you said, kind of reset, allow yourself to slow down and to really reflect um, mm -hmm. And the essential oils, obviously, and really enhance, enhance, yeah. enhance the experience and maybe, um, you know, maybe augment it so that it, it can happen a little bit faster. But using breath exactly. work and um, really just taking a moment to clear your mind and to really reflect on what's going on and being present, right? It sounds mm -hmm. like that's part of the part of the process. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Awesome. That's so good. I mean, I think I love, I love your approach. I love the whole aspect of really just looking at things holistically because I do, you know, I'm not personally a big fan of Western medicine when it's not necessary. I think that there's a time and a place for it. Absolutely. Um, and so I'm always cautious to make this comment that said, I also think that our society and our systems are such that there's often you know, pharmaceuticals that are pushed on us unnecessarily. Yeah. And I think that there's a lot of ways that we can take holistic approaches to our overall health, you know, our mental mm -hmm. wellness, our physical wellness, and people just aren't necessarily educated. And I love that you, you know, really dove in and educated yourself. And now you're teaching others to do the same. And, you know, that's definitely a part of my mission as well, because if we can take care of ourselves, you know, be victorious, be our own hero, and really look at ways naturally that we can make our lives better, we're all gonna benefit. So I think that that's such a beautiful, a beautiful way to live life. And clearly, you know, you're thriving and living your best life. So I love that, it's awesome. Thank you. So tell, tell everybody a little bit where they can find you, what you have going on, where they can get your fabulous book, all that good yeah. stuff. So the book you can get right off Amazon. So it's on Amazon. You can um, snag it on there. It'll deliver right to your doorstep. Um, and then in terms of things that I have going on, I mean, you can follow me on Facebook, just Jennifer Bittner, B-I-T-N-E-R. Um, Instagram, same thing. It's Jennifer underscore Bittner. Um, so you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I post a lot. You know, I try to stay engaged. Um, in terms of a program that I have running, and my website is also JenniferBittner.com. So nice and easy everything's Jennifer Bittner Keep it nice. um, and then I have I do run a 90 day mind fitness mastery transformation so I take my six principles of mind fitness mastery which also if you want to just learn more about the mind fitness mastery principles then I have those as a free ebook so you can just download the free ebook and it will go through the six principles that we talked about earlier uh, and then my Mind Fitness Mastery program, it's a 90 day transformation. So it's all done online. And I actually gift that program to anyone who starts with one of the two um, doTERRA essential oil kits that are, um, that, that where I specifically chose two kits that we use all the products in through the actual transformation. So I gift that program um, to anyone who starts with the products that are actually gonna take you through the brain fuel, the exercise, resting, managing stress, reducing toxic load, etc. cetera. So, uh, so yeah, that's all, you know, that's what I'm doing. And I, I love connecting with people and hearing their stories and, you know, being able to kind of help people towards uh, a life of just optimal mental wellness. I love it. Well, I've been following you for a while on social media and I've learned a ton of great tips from you there. So I highly recommend that everybody follows Jennifer. Um, I'll make sure to put all of your social contact website, your ebook, all those links in the comments. And also it'll show up on the YouTube in the comments and on the article that'll be linked in my, on my website as well. But it's been such a pleasure. I also have to say that this book cover is probably like the sassiest book cover I've seen. I love it. It's fantastic. It's pink. It's high heels. There is nothing I don't love about this book cover. So congratulations. I'm so excited for you. It's a huge accomplishment. And, and most importantly, congratulations on really taking ownership and control of your life and just being in this wonderful place that you are today. It's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.
Yeah, it's so great. I'm so glad you're here. I hope you have a great rest of the day and thanks for being here. Thank you everyone for watching. Don't forget to leave us comments below. If you like these videos and you want to see more and get notified, please make sure that you're subscribing on YouTube, following Sassy Healthy Fit on all the places, Instagram, Facebook, and of course, the website, of course, www.sassyhealthy.fit. We will be back again soon with another episode of Sassy AF TV. Thank you for being here.